them to work every day to, to do the best job they can, but it's that handful who don't that create problems like this and, and that cause incredible suffering for the public. Uh, Ms. Hedman, following, or I should, I guess, refer to you as Dr. Hedman, following up on questions posed earlier rega regarding outstanding FOIA requests, the email I read to Dr. Edwards shows the EPA Michigan Program Director, your former colleague, emailing other EPA and Michigan employees to their official accounts to provide them cover from the legislature or whoever who might theoretically ask about their exposure to Mr. Del Toro's memo. Is it worth noting, it is worth noting, that the program director sent this from her personal Gmail account to their official email. Um, EPA has a history of using such methods to circumvent transparency. For instance, Gina McCarthy's been called before uh, uh, this committee or, or the science committee, I believe it's the science committee, for example, because of using, uh, do, using her personal email uh, for uh, government business. Uh, this email that I read today appears to me to be evidence of a deliberate intention to mislead. Uh, going back to the fact that most employees try to do the best they can, I, and that a handful don't, I, I think that this indicates that there's a cultural secrecy and a lack of transparency that starts at the top. How would you respond to that? I would respond by saying that EPA has a policy of not using personal email and if there is an instance where um, it is necessary for technical reasons to copy one's government account. Well, you know, she did that six weeks later. I've got a copy of the law here, Title 44, uh, regarding uh, federal records that requires that this, that indicates, uh, Mr. Chairman, that she didn't uh, copy this in a timely manner. Um, you know, I, I want to, this is not about finger pointing, and, and that's, that's what tr troubles me about this hearing. It's not about politics, it's about these people who have suffered injury uh, because of the failure of government. And, and I, I just want to say this, I believe every member of this committee has a responsibility to get to the truth, to make sure that government fulfills its responsibility to serve the public, and in this case, to protect the public. We want the truth. I've talked, I, I've gotten to know a lot of the members on this committee and I can assure you we can handle the truth, the whole truth. Mr. Chairman, I, I'm just not at all confident that we've heard the whole truth today. I yield back. I think the gentleman will now recognize the gentlewoman from New Jersey, Ms. Watson Coleman, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to you and our ranking member for holding this hearing. Um, this is indeed a sad day and a little bit confusing uh, how we get to the bottom of something when everyone's pointing their finger in another direction with the exception of Mayor Walling and Mr. Edwards. Um, Mr. Edwards, I want to ask you a question that has nothing to do with Flint. My state, the state of New Jersey, is experiencing um, a knowledge of uh, high lead content, particularly in 11 cities, but right now concentrating on one city. Do you know whether or not EPA is at all monitoring or getting involved in that situation at this early stage so that we won't have a Flint, Michigan situation? Uh, my suspicion is that they're probably not, although they did send that memo, and again, I applaud this, that they sent the memo out that basically said, thou shalt stop cheating on the lead and copper rule monitoring it took too long to get to that yeah. point but that that memo has gone out it's not going to help you in the short term because it's going to take six months before those rules are changed um mr chairman and ranking member cummings i believe that this issue is broader than what we're experiencing this very sad situation and i very much would look forward to having oversight committee hearing on EPA's role in this whole issue across the United States because I think it will be very revealing and very, very scary in what's happening in our, our small, older, uh, poorer communities. And so I make that request for your consideration. Um, Ms. Hedman, where is Mr. Del Toro? Where, where is he? In the, where is he? Physically right now? He, Working, where is he working? Where is he located? Where is he working? Well, he works out of the Region 5 office. I know that recently he has spent a great deal of time in Flint. Uh, so he may very well be there um, working right now. So let me ask you this question. For 50 years, um, Flint, Michigan was receiving its water from the Detroit, Detroit system. Is that correct? 
So for that 50 years, the water treatment system in Flint was dormant? Is that fair? Okay. Was there any requirement that before you reactivate a dormant system that you do certain precautionary uh, testing and preparation? I, I know that there are requirements, but I can't speak to the specifics. Are there any EPA requirements? Uh, again, I can't speak to the specifics of that. Dr. Edwards, can you answer that question? The law requires that when you switch to a new water source that you do corrosion control studies in advance of the switch to make sure that you have effective corrosion control in place. And in the absence of doing a, a study, the simplest thing, the minimum that would have been allowed under the law would have been to continue the corrosion control that was used in Flint, I mean in Detroit water, which would have been dosing of orthophosphate. So had they done the minimum under the law, uh, adding that orthophosphate to the Flint River water, which had been done for 50 years under Detroit, the vast majority of these problems, including the leaking pipes, the Legionella, the lead, would not have occurred. So tell me, the, give me a time frame, because I'm confused somewhat about the time frame when this should have happened. Should that have happened in uh, April of 2014? Uh, this should have been done months before the switch. The switch was April of 2014? Yes. And who was the emergency manager at, during that period of time? I don't know at all. Do you know Mr. Yes, Early? In April of, uh, April of 2014, I was the emergency manager. So then why didn't you, as the emergency manager, ensure that before this switch was going to take place, that all of the safety and security measures were in place? I did, and I wasn't sure that all that were required had taken place. We had been monitoring this switch. Uh, again, as I said, the project started before I got there, and once I got there, we continued to monitor, and I received updates well, from... Well, Mr. Early, who, who told you? Who, who, who assured you that the, these safety and security measures were in place before actually turning on uh, the switch? The director of the Department of Public Works, which is also the director of the um, Flint Water Treatment Supply uh, or, or Water Treatment Department, uh, it was his responsibility to make sure that all of those things were in place and he had staff working with him and they in turn worked directly with the MDEQ and the EPA to make sure we were meeting all of the requirements. Okay. Those were the requirements. So now, for we've, now we've introduced another level. The local sanitation department or water department manager the treatment people, the, the treatment water people. Plant. Yes. So now it's his response. It was his responsibility to ensure that these measures were in place, and he's the one that informed you that it, these measures were in place. He misrepresented that we were meeting the. Did he requirement. misrepresent? Did he? telling you the truth. Well, we all know now that the information that we all got was somewhat misinformed. Based Where did on, the lie start? Well, the information that we got was from the MDEQ, which governed our switch from the Detroit Water and Sewer Department to the Flint River. We relied on the information we received from the state regulatory agencies. I can't believe my five minutes is up so quickly, um, because God knows we haven't gotten to the bottom of this yet. Um, but thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. This is incredibly... Thank the gentleman. We'll now recognize the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Carter, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Hedman, I'm correct when I say that, that EPA has the authority to intervene when there's contamination in drinking water that poses a threat to humans. Is that correct? When, yes. When there is a threat and the state has failed... When there is a threat to humans, EPA has the authority to intervene, correct? And the state has failed to take action. Now, come on, Ms. Hebbing. EPA has a responsibility to the citizens. You have to intervene. Not when the state doesn't do it. When you see that it happens, you have to do it then. Isn't that, no, 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 you don't... I'll ask the questions, okay? You're aware of the memo that came in June of 2015 from Miguel de Toro, right? You're aware of that memo. In June of, of 2015, Mr. Del Toro's title was Regulations Manager, Groundwater and Drinking Water Branch. 
He's a drinking water specialist. Yes. In fact, I, I believe that he was one of the key members of your safe drinking water team. Yes. In fact, I believe that you said he's one of the top experts in his field. He is. He is. Yet, when, when Mr. Del Toro reported the high levels of lead in Flint's drinking water, not only did you silence him, but you sat around idly and did nothing. Why would you do that? I didn't. If he is, if he is an expert, as you have acknowledged, why didn't you listen to him? I did, and I did not sit silently. I did not. I beg to differ, Miss Hedman. Instead of heeding the warning of one of your top experts, one of your top experts. And listen, all of us here, we depend on people. We depend on staff. But if we don't listen to them, they do us no good whatsoever. You surround yourself with good people, as you did. You surrounded yourself with a specialist. You got to listen to him, but you didn't do that. Not only did. did you not listen to him, you tried to silence him. I did not. Now, you know, this is. So, what did you do? You sought a, a legal opinion. Is that correct? Well, immediately in immediately, June, immediately you, in June, I offered technical assistance to the Flint mayor. Uh, on that was July first. On July tenth, we issued our first uh, statement urging Flint residents to get their water tested and to take precautions to limit. Here you have an expert who's telling you we got a problem. We, we got lead in our drinking water. Instead of protecting the citizens, like the EPA is, that's what EPA is about. Thank environmental you. protection, environmental EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, yes, protecting the public. And Instead of saying, we got an expert here, one of my, one of my team members, who, who is an expert in this field is telling us we got lead in this water. Stop drinking it. Stop drinking it right now. But you didn't do that. You saw a legal opinion because you no. were wanting to follow the law? No. Uh, let's, let's be clear. The data reported in Mr. Del Toro's memo was data related to one residence, first of all. My first question about that was had the lead service line been removed? It was and the follow-up testing showed that the water was safe to drink. And then two neighboring houses, um, one of which did show high lead levels and one of which did not. That data by itself indicated something about the tap water in those three residences. And ultimately, Mr. Del Toro's final version of the memo concluded that the residents with very high lead levels had high lead levels, not due to lack of corrosion control, but because of physical disturbance of the lead surface line. Because of physical disturbance of the lead surface line. Construction in the street. Construction in the street. You know, I... I and so, so the, point, the point being, I mean, his, memo, his memo also made the point that corrosion control had not been implemented in Flint. That was a point that Previously, other... Dr. Hedman, I'm sorry. Dr. Edwards, what do you make of this? I'm kind of wondering if she's read the memo to this day. Because there are three reports that the city had collected high lead in drinking water from Leanne's house. 100, 300, 700 parts per billion before there was any disturbance. And moreover, her statement that she warned Flint residents to start flushing the water... No Flint residents got a warning that the water was unsafe to drink. What they got is Mr. Walling going on TV and saying that the water is safe to drink. That was, was the message that was sent. No Flint resident got any warning about dangerous levels of lead in drinking water, the fact that corrosion control laws were not being followed in Flint. No one knew that. You know, let me tell you, Dr. Hedman, I'm sorry. There's a special place in hell for actions like this. Mr. Chairman, I, I yield. Chairman yields back. You recognize the gentleman from California, Mr. Liu, for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to start with the national issues and then come down to Flint. Uh, we know that in addition to Flint, we've had lead-tainted water in Washington, D.C., in Sebring, Ohio, and now in New York, New Jersey, where school children have been poisoned. Um, Ms. Had been uh, this really uh, is a national issue as well, isn't it? Um, given that I'm no longer at the agency, I don't want to speak for EPA, but uh, indeed, um, lead is an issue of concern um, throughout the country. I have two articles here. One is a report from the NRDC 
that says study finds safety drinking water in U.S. cities at risk. NRDC reports on drinking water systems of 19 cities and finds that pollution, old pipes, and outdated treatment threaten tap water quality. And then I have a second article in Salon. It says it's not just a Flint problem. Other U.S. cities are suffering from toxic water. And Mr. Chairman, if I could enter these into the record without objection, so ordered. Uh, Ms. Hedman, I'm going to read you a couple sentences from this Salon article. The author writes, the Safe Drinking Water Act, enacted in 1986, required the EPA to set standards for the concentration of lead in public pipes with a push for lead free. This stirred the country on a road towards replacing old water pipes with plastic pipes as an eco-friendly alternative. However, many poor municipalities instead turned to anti-corrosive agents as a cheaper and faster solution. Uh, if Flint had plastic pipes, uh, none of us would be here today, correct? That's true. In fact, if Sebring, Newark, and Washington, D.C. had plastic pipes, none of, none of that lead contamination would have happened, correct? That's true, although if there were lead in fixtures, it would still be a concern. I understand. Thank you. Uh, now let's talk about Flint. Um, Mr. Uh, Early, I, I read your testimony, uh, and I heard it today as well. Um, you essentially say everything was fine, and everyone told you everything was fine, and you had regular meetings uh, with the water treatment officials. Um, did you know uh, that the water treatment plant operator, Michael Glasgow, wrote an email saying, I have people above me making plans to distribute water ASAP. If water is distributed from this plant in the next couple of weeks, it will be against my direction. So it was not fine uh, for Michael Glasgow. Um, were you aware of that? I was. Oh, it's Mr. Early, yes. Oh. I was made aware of that uh, email uh, when I uh, sat before the governor's task force. It was the first time I had seen that email. So I'm not sure what he's referring to when he talks about people above him, because there were at least two other layers uh, one, possibly two other layers of supervision before it got to me. So even though you regularly, as you said, regularly met with water treatment plant officials, you had no idea that the water treatment plant operator has said, I am not ready to go on this. You had no idea. No, there was no discussion on that in our regular meetings. What was going on? Stop, stop right there. You also testified that this was not a leadership issue. This is purely a water treatment issue. I suggest that this was a leadership issue if you had no idea, even though you had regular meetings, that this water treatment plant operator was making these statements that he was not ready to go. Um, I'm curious, you know, Mr. Walling, uh, I commend him for saying I'm sorry and for apologizing. That took courage. Ms. Early, I, I don't see that anywhere in your testimony. Are you ready to say you're sorry? What I've said and will say again is that, you know, I was responsible. It happened on my watch. Are you sorry? I feel very badly about that. And yes, I'm sorry that the people of the city of Flint have had to go through, I said that earlier, this crisis. I, it, it tears me up inside. I'm very regretful and remorseful for what's happened. I miss Hedman. The EPA knew in April that corrosive agents were not being put in. Why did it take so long for them to let you know in, in June that that was not happening? Um, I think the, from, from the review of the emails that I have seen during that time period, that um, the first reaction was, if we simply tell MDEQ they need to do this, they'll do it. When were corrosive agents actually put in? Uh, in December 9th is okay. when corrosion control began. So April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, children of Flint were drinking lead contaminated water. Why, why in July or August didn't you just stand up and yell and scream, stop this, stop, give them bottled water. Why did it take so long? I mean, to me, this is negligence bordering on deliberate indifference. You knew, EPA knew in April, corrosive agent's not done. In June, you were notified of that. And then you were given a report that said, lots of lead in this drinking water. And then nothing is done until December. There is no excuse for that. Someone needed to have yelled and screamed and said, stop this. People are being poisoned. Should have been done in at least July or August, maybe September. 
at least by October. That was so wrong. This was a crime of...